everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing a book haul. So I have a good mix of books here. I have some new releases. I have some upcoming releases. It's a little bit of everything, but if you did want to see a book haul of like backlisted books, I just did a video last week that was come book shopping with me, but online because we are in lockdown number three where I live. So you guys can check that out. I will have it linked down below. I just picked up some backlisted books that I had been interested in and it was a lot of fun. But today I'm going to be talking about some newer releases and I was going to wait until my copy of Rule of Wolves came in by Leigh Bardugo, which is the second King of Scars book, but I'm still waiting for it, so we're just going to proceed, but that is coming. I don't know why my pre-order is so late and why my pre-orders have been so late recently. Like, they don't ship until like a week after the release date, and it's very strange and also frustrating, but whatever, it's fine. Let's just get into the book haul. So today's book haul is kindly sponsored by Disney Book Group in honor of the recent release of Go the Distance by Jen Kalanita. This is the latest book in the Twisted Tale series, which is a series that Disney does where they take a classic Disney fairy tale that you know and love and they answer a question and twist the story. So for this one, it is what if Meg had to become a Greek god? This is a reimagining of Hercules and I am so excited for this. Oh my goodness. It just, every time I think of it, it makes me want to watch Hercules. Like that's honestly what I want to do right now. And I'm probably going to make my boyfriend watch it with me this weekend. I think that sounds like a great plan. I have only read one of the Twisted Tales so far because I keep talking about this readathon that I'm going to do one day and then things keep on getting in the way. But I have plenty on my TBR, but the one that I have read is Unbirthday, which was the Alice in Wonderland one. And I really loved it. And since then, I have just been wanting to devour all of the Twisted Tales. So I'm so excited to have a new one here. I think this is going to be really fun. I love Meg and I feel like I've taken a bunch of like Disney quizzes before and I feel like I always get her as like the character that I'm most like and I kind of love that. So this is actually set after the events of Hercules and Zeus ends up telling Hercules and Meg that they can't be together because Meg is immortal. So she has the opportunity to complete this quest and earn her place on Mount Olympus. But the quest is to go and get her ex's wife from like the underworld so it just sounds so much fun and like a story focused on Meg I am here for it so if you guys are interested in checking this book out it is out now so I will have a link down below so you can do just that and thank you once again to Disney Book Group for sponsoring today's video next up I have three more of the seasons editions so these are classics that they are limited edition and they have like this laser cut cover they are so beautiful but these are the newly released spring edition so I am missing one because even though I pre-ordered them all in the same order the one didn't ship yet so there is Sherlock Holmes and that one I'm waiting for but it is on the way once again so here I have The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett and The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo and finally we have Emma by Jane Austen so the way that they do these which I didn't realize is that the season that these are printed in are actually like prevalent to the story, which is really interesting. I do wish that they had kind of chosen more diverse titles for it, but I do enjoy them. Like they're really pretty and there's only 10,000 copies of them printed. So I have been working my way and collecting them all. They're actually on the last season. Fall is the next one. And I'm not sure how I feel about those yet because like they've been changing the color of this part every time. So it was white and then it was blue and now it's green and then it's black, which like I understand why, but it's so such a stark difference, but these are still really beautiful and I feel like they are a staple to any collector's collection. Next up, much like actually with Go the Distance, like I can't stop singing Go the Distance every time I think of this book, but I'm mentioning this because the next book is Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. This is another book by Morgan Matson. I don't, I think there's only two, like Since You've Been Gone also has a title that is a song and I cannot stop singing this song. Like every time I'm like, take me home tonight. 
I don't want to learn. Like, I can't stop. It's a problem. But I'm so excited to have a new Morgan Madsen book. And more than that, I'm excited to have an arc of it. Thank you so much to Simon and Schuster for sending this my way because I don't think I've ever had a Morgan Madsen arc. And she's one of my favorite authors, so it means a lot. But this is the latest release by her. Her last book I didn't love, but I have enjoyed all of her writing. Like, she writes really fun contemporaries. And this one, I don't think is going to be any exception. It is all about these characters characters who they end up going to New York and they're planning this one night of fun and freedom but everything ends up going awry and it ends up being one night stuck in New York but they don't have any phones or anything so it becomes like obviously that's going to be a big thing so really interested to see how that's going to play out. I feel like this is going to hopefully transport me right to New York City because I haven't been in like it'll be two years now and that's the longest I've gone without being in New York in a really long time like I've gone every year for book on and everything but now that's not a thing anymore but anyways I think this is gonna be a lot of fun is my point and this is coming out I don't know when May so it's coming out in May so you don't have that much longer to wait which is nice next up is a book that I actually just got in the mail literally right before filming this video and that is The Other Side of Perfect by Mariko Turk this is another ballet story I have read a couple and I have a couple on my TBR still that I have been meaning to get to but now I have another one here so in this one, you follow Alina, who she shatters her leg and her dreams of a ballet career obviously are kind of shattered along with that. So she ends up going to this ranch and oh no, it's not a ranch. <laughs> like I, I just got this, so I don't have any notes about the synopsis, but I read it and it's like after a summer spent healing and then I saw ranch, but <laughs> it literally says eating vast amounts of cool ranch Doritos. So it's not on a ranch. <laughs> but anyway, she ends up going to a normal high school. She used to go to a ballet school, but she is obviously unable to do that now. And she reluctantly ends up joining the musical. So it's a story about her healing and moving past like her shattered dreams and maybe finding something something new that she loves. Next up is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. So I actually have another book by this author, but I haven't gotten the chance to read it yet, but that is The Marriage Game. And this one sounds so fun because it is fake dating, which we all know I really love, one of my favorite tropes. But this follows two characters and they're both basically trying to like please their families. And the main character is a software engineer and she understands logic, but not really love. She's not interested in it and she doesn't have time for a relationship either. Either, but her family just keeps on bugging her about it. So she ends up entering into this fake engagement relationship with her old childhood crush. So we also have second chance romance there, which we all also know that I really love. So her decoy fiance, Liam, he is a venture capitalist and he knows that his, like, he is supposed to be inheriting money from his late grandfather, but this inheritance depends on him having a wife. So he sees this as the perfect solution to the problem. Problem, but it ends up that, you know, as they are going on these dates to solidify the ruse, it ends up being more, you know, real than they thought. And I think it's going to be absolutely adorable and I'm really excited for it. <laughs> Next up is Big Boned by Joe Watson. So this is actually an arc. It is coming out in September. So there is quite a ways to go before this book actually is out. But it is about a plus size main character and she is going to a new school and she misses her old school because at her old school, art is what she was known for. It outweighed what everyone else sees is her weight. And she had such a passion for art and her family was also like picture perfect, except now her parents have had a divorce and she is just really struggling at this new school with all of these changes. So she ends up going on this journey of self-discovery, kind of the coming of age story, where she finds art again as a release. And I think it's going to be a really great story. I love this cover. I think it is beautiful. I love all the succulents everywhere and everything. And I'm really looking forward to this one. Next up is Anna K by Jenny Lee. So I have talked about this book before because I had really wanted it, but I restrained myself and waited until the paperback came out. And now the paperback is out. So I have it here. But this story I had been kind of interested in and then live over at Stories for Coffee, loved it. So since then I've been very interested in it because I trust her opinion very much. But this is an Anna Karenina retelling and you follow the main character who she basically has like this picture perfect life. She is above all of the teenage problems that her friends and her brother are struggling with. She is doing great. She's pleasing her Korean American father. She has a great boy 
boyfriend. Like, everything is going according to plan, but that is until it stops being like that. She ends up meeting this mysterious guy, and they're inevitably pulled to each other, and they have a chemistry that neither of them can deny, so we follow their love story, and I haven't actually read Anna Karenina because it's so big, and I, I just, I'm very intimidated by it, but one day I will, but I will probably read this retelling first. Next up is The Lucky List by Rachel Lippincott. So this is another book that was sent to me by the publisher. Thank you so much to them for sending it my way, but this is an arc and it comes out June 1st, and it is by the author of Five Feet Apart, one of the authors, because there were two, two or three authors of that, but that movie, I never read the book, but I saw the movie and I did actually enjoy the movie, surprisingly. But this is a story that I think is going to be really emotional, but I also love the concept for it. So the main character, her and her mother were inseparable until her mother ends up dying from cancer. And she is really struggling with that. She is struggling with coping with that grief and moving on past it. But she ends up, her father is going to get rid of all of her mother's belongings and sell their old childhood home. And she feels very alone because they've just moved back into town. And the only person that she can confide in is someone that she has known for like five seconds. But she ends up finding this bucket list that her mother had when she was in high school and she starts to try and complete the things on this bucket list. So I think that sounds like it's going to be fun but also really emotional and hard to read but really fun and cute overall I feel like. I think it's going to be a story with a lot of emotion, good and bad, but I really do love that concept. Next is Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. So this is the final unfortunately book in the Brown Sisters trilogy by Talia Hibbert. I liked the first one. The second one is definitely my favorite and this is the third one so I don't know how I feel about it yet but this is following I believe it's the youngest brown sister and she is also the flightiest brown sister so I'm really excited to read about the youngest sister because I am the youngest out of three so definitely can identify with that but she ends up crashing into the life of a and b owner who is really uptight and of course there ends up being a romance there so I love the concept of a b and b super excited to hear Eve's story and honestly Danny Brown was so much fun and like I do love Talia Hibbert's writing overall so really cannot wait to get into this one and I probably will be reading it very soon. Next is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. So one, this has such a gorgeous cover. I'm obsessed with it. Two, it's not what I expected because it is actually a YA murder mystery. So it follows the main character who feels like she doesn't really fit in anywhere. She doesn't fit in in the greater world. She doesn't fit in in her reservation and she's trying to find a place to fit in but she ends up actually witnessing a murder and then she ends up agreeing to assist the FBI in this covert mission to like try and discover why there have been these recent drug related deaths so she uses her knowledge of Ojibwe medicine to try and like help them it seems really interesting so this does feature Native American representation particularly Ojibwe representation and I've heard some amazing things about this book so I really cannot wait to get into this one. I am sad though that it has the Reese's YA book club sticker but it's not a sticker so it's just permanently there and it does kind of like I wish it wasn't there at all. I don't know what happened to my voice there but moving on. Next up is another arc that I'm so excited to have and that is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. So it kind of looks like someone like read this. I know they didn't but it kind of the spine is cracked a little bit even if they did like you do you. You enjoy this book and then I will. But this is coming out in July I believe. It was supposed to come out in June but then they pushed the release date but this is the next book by the author of Cinderella is Dead and this one I don't think is a retelling. It follows a character who she has the ability to make a plant grow from like the tiniest seed with a single touch. So her aunt ends up dying and then her family family decides to leave Brooklyn for the summer and go to the estate that the aunt left behind and hopefully there she can learn to control her gift but there ends up being like people coming to the door searching for elixirs and tinctures tinctures I can't say that word Tink I don't know it starts with a T I'm just gonna put it on the screen but they are looking for like potions and stuff kind of and they're all very confused by that like there basically ends up being more to the estate than meets the eye and I think this seems really cool. It's the start of a new series actually. Well, Cinderella is Dead was a standalone and I'm super excited to read more from this author because I really enjoyed Cinderella.
Cinderella is dead. Actually, speaking of, we will just move on to the other arc that I got along with that one at the same time. That is A Tokyo Ever After by Amiko Jean. So I talked about this book and was there another one here? Take Me Home Tonight. I did a video recently where I was talking about spring releases that I'm really looking forward to and this one was definitely on there because it sounds so good. It is described as the Princess Diaries meets Crazy Rich Asians and I totally see where that comparison is coming from because the main character, she hasn't really felt like she fits in in her neighborhood. She lives in this small Northern California town and she just doesn't feel like she fits in as a Japanese American woman and she has been raised by her single mother. She hasn't really ever known anything about her father but then she ends up finding out that her father is crown prince of Japan which makes her a princess so like literally there is a scene from Princess Diaries just playing in my mind. I'm too afraid of getting copyrighted so I don't want to put the actual scene but I also want you to know what scene it is so I'm gonna act it out now okay so I'm at a tea party okay <clears throat> a princess shut up wow that was so bad carry on. I also would like to mention that I'm literally just doing that for memory so I don't think it's even accurate but like that's what it is in my brain. And now I really want to watch Princess Diaries 2 but she ends up going to Japan and meeting her father for the first time and obviously dealing with like a lot and she finds that there she feels like she's struggling to fit in too. I think this is going to be a story dealing a lot with like struggling with identity but I think it's gonna be cute and fun at the same time and I am super excited for this one. So this one is coming out out, May 25th so just a little ways to go for this one. Next up is The Sky Blues by Robbie Couch so this was sent to me by the publisher as well thank you to them for sending it to me but this follows a boy who is out he is openly gay and he still is able to remain pretty much invisible in his small town but then he ends up planning this epic promposal and he ends up actually being blackmailed it's all secret but then someone ends up revealing his promposal plan and it's a very home phobic way that they reveal it and he ends up being like wanting to kind of hide in the shadows and dealing with the fallout from that which is definitely going to be really difficult. So I've heard some amazing things about this book so it has made me really excited to read it. Next up is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This is the latest by the author of Cemetery Boys which was one of my favorite books of last year but unfortunately I actually ended up DNFing this one. I'll talk about it more in a recent reads video soon but I just it was a miss for me and I'm honestly so incredibly sad about it because I just wanted to love it so badly. I will try more by this author but this one just didn't work for me. So this is actually an urban Peter Pan retelling and you follow Wendy who her and her brothers went missing a long time ago and she ended up returning but her brothers never did and now some children have started to go missing again so she is being asked a lot of questions that she doesn't know the answers to and she also ends up running into Peter and he is like looking for her help basically with everything that's happening. So I just, oh, I think there, there will be people who love this and I, it just didn't work for me because I found it really, really boring and like it just, the story never got going. But once again, I will talk about it more in a recent reads video. I don't think it's a bad book by any means. It just wasn't for me, but yeah, it is beautiful. Like the cover is gorgeous. Next up is Twice Shy by Sarah Hogel. So this is the author of You Deserve Each Other, which I have wanted to read, but I never actually ended up picking up. But this one I pre-ordered. So I don't know. I just, sometimes I pre-order books and then they show up on my doorstep and I like don't remember pre-ordering them. And I'm like, okay, thank you for the gift past Haley. <laughs> but this is about a character who ends up inheriting this estate. My hair is bugging me so much right now, but <laughs> she ends up inheriting this estate. It's it's in the Smokies and she inherits it from her great aunt and she decides to go there to try and like reset, you know, find an opportunity for a fresh start. But when she gets there, she discovers that she is not the only person who inherited it. And she has to obviously like deal with this other person who is obviously the love interest. So I feel like the estate in the Smokies, that really is intriguing to me. I don't think it's an estate. It's just like a cabin. I'm just saying estate because I'm thinking of this poison heart, but like basically she inherits a house. It's a 
and Smokies, she has to deal with another guy who also inherited it, and that sounds complicated, but like it could be fun. Next is With You All The Way by Cynthia Hand. So I actually just finally read The How and The Why by this author, which I've read a couple, I've read a few of her books before, and The How and The Why is more of like an emotional contemporary. She's written a couple of those, so that's kind of what I was expecting from this one, but upon reading the synopsis, I'm not so sure about this one. That being said, I will still read it. I did really enjoy the how and the why. So this, I believe, is a sex positive story because it deals with the main character who, like, she caught her boyfriend cheating after this humiliating attempt to lose her virginity. She's really tired of receiving unsolicited advice from her older sister. And to top it all off, on a family vacation to Hawaii, she ends up discovering that her own mother is actually cheating. So she becomes very upset by it all and just for some reason, I'm not really sure where this connects, the synopsis is kind of confusing, but she decides to just have sex and like that's, I don't know, that's her plan. Basically she wants to like take the pressure out of all of it and just lose her virginity once and for all. So we shall see what is going to happen. Kind of like not sure about this one, but it could be good. So. I don't know. And finally is Hannah Khan Carries On by Uzma Jalaluddin. This is by the author of Aisha at Last, which I haven't read but has been intriguing to me, but this one just seems right up my alley because it is set, it is romance at two competing halal restaurants, and I love like stories that deal with food. I have so many books right now that deal with that, and this is just the latest to add to my collection. This is actually an arc that was sent to me by the publisher, so it comes out April six actually, so it will be out by the time you see this video. The actual cover for this, I'm really sad that I just got this cover. If I do enjoy it, I will probably pick up the actual cover because it is so beautiful. Like, I really love it. But you are following our main character who she is waitressing at this halal restaurant and it's not really doing so well, but there also is this competing, more upscale halal restaurant that is opening up very soon. And the main character also, she hopes to be a radio star, but for now, she has started making her own podcast and has been throwing her heart and soul into that. But to top it all off, she starts falling for a guy who is working at this halal restaurant that is going to be opening up soon. So I think this sounds so cute. I cannot wait for it. Also, I believe the author is Canadian. So that's always a plus for me. But yeah, can't wait for this one. Okay, so those are all the books that I had to talk about today. This was a longer book haul than I was expecting. But you know, that's what happens when you pre order order a bunch of books, but I'm so excited for all of these. Honestly, I've been in the mood to read like everything lately. I just want to devour all of the books, truly. But thank you so much once again to Disney Book Group for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out Go the Distance by Jen Calonita. I will be doing my little readathon with the Twisted Tales soon, I hope. It's just life has been everywhere, so I really apologize for that, but this will be one that I will read then as well because it sounds amazing. Can't wait to hear more about about Meg, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have read any of these books, your thoughts on them, or if you plan on reading any of them, because I would love to know. But I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye!